Hi, everybody. Coming up today on Between Friends, we're going to take you down memory lane just a little bit and reintroduce you to some people just like this guy. Hope the birthday presents you get from Mom and Dad will make this very special day the best you've ever had. That's right, that was Casey Jones, and you probably shared a few peanut butter sandwiches with him during <laughs> lunch at home, and we're going to talk to Casey and some of the other great uh, kids' show performers. And also, uh, Shirley MacLaine's new movie, Waiting for the Light, opens today nationwide. Corb and I went to a screening. We're going to show you a little clip from the movie later on in the show, and also have our weekly host review. Is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? And speaking of thumbs down, something's coming down there. This is Graffiti Bridge. It is Prince's new movie. It opens tonight in the Twin Cities, and we're going to have three of the dancers and choreographers actually perform, as well as a fashion show of the hot Graffiti Bridge costumes that Prince and the other stars wear in the film. Whoa. To find out where she and WLOL's John Hines did a profile of CJ's people, the diva of Dish of the Minneapolis Star Tribune. There he is at the beauty parlor the getting the inside scoop. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello Hi. to all of you at home. We're glad that you're joining us. And hi to you. Hi, Corp. Happy. What's that? That was John Hines under a hair dryer. He's a funny guy. He really, it's this, this, this CJ thing that's coming up a little later is really, really funny. And so you got to stay tuned for that. It's, Hines goes right in there and goes for it. He's goes great. for the deal. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the kids shows. Uh, and, and it's funny. Um, I didn't grow up here in the Twin Cities, nor did you. But I think there's a kids show similar to the types of things that were going on here in the Twin Cities in the 50s and 60s in just about every town across the country. And when I mentioned to my husband, who is a native Minneapolitan, that we were going to have these guys, you know, Clancy the Cop and Casey Jones and all that, on the show today, his eyes just lit up. And our audience members did the same thing. It's like, oh, there's Clancy. Oh, there's Casey. <laughs> they were. They were loving well, it. Did you have this well, kind of thing well, in Well, the your studio town? has been buzzing for the last uh, three or four days when they knew that everyone was coming down. Uh, I grew up outside the uh, metropolitan New York area, and we had Officer Joe, uh, who was a local guy, and also we had a, you know, Captain Kangaroo, but Officer Joe was great. He was on uh, the local uh, station there, and it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. He was a cop. That wasn't and the it, police officer that came to your door when you no, were a no, juvenile that, delinquent, no, not that Officer Joe, because he was Officer Joe prevented me from becoming <laughs> a juvenile delinquent. He gave me all those great positive images, and he was a great guy, and it was fun, and it's sort of a time that's uh, gone by, and I'm, we're going to ask the guys about, you know, if it would work today, and but it was uh, yeah. it was a fun time in my life. Yeah, yeah. I think so. You know, uh, if you came home from school at lunchtime, chances are you sat down and had your peanut butter and jelly and and watched Chocolate this milk. kind. That's right, this kind of TV. No matter where you grew up, but in the 50s and 60s, it seemed to be the era when locally produced children's shows were on the air. And the Twin Cities, of course, was no different. Uh, we thought it would be fun to reintroduce you to some of these guys by their real names because you probably don't know them by their real names. You, as we mentioned, you might know Clancy the Cop or uh, Casey Jones. But first, let's take a look as we step back in time to some childhood memories. Hey kids, it's that time again. Stay tuned for a full hour of fun and cartoons and games and prizes with your old friend Captain Darl. But right now, let's meet that crazy clown, T.M. Setters on Circus Sideshow! Hi, 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 how are you, for goodness sake? Hi, uh, boy. I, I just opened up my new barber shop today, you know. <laughs> just a little sample. Let's go meet them right now. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I got to see you guys. I got a, a, a kiss from Clancy the Cop and uh, Willie Ketchum <laughs> when they came into the studio this morning. And, and we got and, one back. <laughs> too. That was very nice. She's a fair girl. <laughs> That's right. So it's, it's a kind of a different deal. When you all came into the studio, we were talking about the audience having such a tremendous reaction. It, I would imagine that that happens to you when you go to the grocery store still and things like that, that people 
say, oh, I remember that. How about you? Well, that's true. It's uh, Still, people do come up and say, hi, Casey. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it does happen, although we've been off for, for a long time. Now, you all do have real names, and I suppose that I should <laughs> give them. Aliases. Just in case. You've probably been going under your aliases for a long time, but we'll give your real name. Sitting next to me is Roger Awesome, and Roger did play Casey Jones, of course. At Lunch with Casey was the longest-running show in the Twin Cities Kids Show. 1953 to 72 is a long time. That's a long time. To be How long on you the been air? Up? How long have you been? <laughs> Since April. <laughs> Seven months. Well, you close. guys have to speak. Well, that's what really, we make really, it. Really, really close. <laughs> Sitting next to him is Darrell Love. And Darrell, now you had a, a difficult job because you had two different shows. You had Skipper Darrell, J.P. Patches, 53 to 55 at WTCN, which yes, is right, right here. here. And, of course, Casey Jones was done right here as well. And then you were Captain Darrell and T. and Tatters from 55 to 62 at KSTP. So you'd have to make right. a... A quick change. Well, those. we had to change the names because of a little legality there. I didn't have a clear <laughs> title to the copyright. But the uh, the first show that when the character was the Skipper Darrell, I brought along a picture because it has a little story to it. This was 1953, and it was the first one of the gang here that I started out doing a character. There's a rear sc screen. I'm sitting on supposedly a ship's deck. And the rear screen had some gulls there, and we would have a man behind it, actually, man, probably Don Middlestead, who's still here. <laughs> our floor director, right? Yes, Shaking it help. up and down, <laughs> and the problem was that uh, the mother's cause, they can't just slow that down or stop it, all the kids are getting seasick. And throwing, <laughs> up. <laughs> throwing up, I love it. So following that, just one quick shot here, then uh, they decided we needed, uh, uh, you know, in this business, I, um, I'm in sales here at KQRS the last 20 years. By the way, <laughs> oh, as if by magic. Your, uh, this is uh, oh, your Jeff, Jeff Passel, sure. who's running for governor with our Terry train in the morning. So if you have any write-in votes, there you go. You couldn't find the big sign, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I have a big sign right you know, there. You know, I hate to interrupt this great political commercial we've got going here, but I did want to introduce John Gallows. And John Gallows, you were Commodore Cappy from 57 to 59, but the big... The big hit, the ones that, that the kids know you for, is when you changed to Clancy the Cop all the way through 1977, and you were over at WCCO. Welcome, John. Well, it's great to be here, and I happen to have a photograph <laughs> of uh, the three... You'll never get to the end. Alan, I'll get to you eventually. <laughs> the three stooges right here, Larry, Moe, and Curly. But this is an historic photograph. Let's uh, see. If you can get a close-up of that. This is the Commodore Cappy character that started it all. Oh, uh, played the part of a submarine skipper <laughs> on the atomic submarine, the Crazy Carrot. Uh -huh. And there's uh, Daryl Lobb in all his glory as TN Tatters. <laughs> and uh, of course, Casey Jones. And we're holding uh, the Gopher Centennial dolls at the Minnesota State Fair. That was 1958. The picture oh, was taken. Only yesterday. And we don't look that old, do we, you fellas? You know, you don't Guys look, look great. Different, no different. And Alan Lotzberg, last but certainly not least, sitting down there on yes. the end. Hi, Alan. Was Willie Ketchum in 1961? You joined Clancy, and it became Willie. Yes, and, and uh, we did Clancy that. Clancy and uh, Willie. We did that for uh, John and I were talking about it uh, in the green room. How many years has it been? And I really have no. La by the way, everybody's showing something. Here's my business card. You know, <laughs> there's a shot of it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But we were uh, we spent we have all a those years. Jack crew, they get right. <laughs> fast crew, and we couldn't we couldn't uh, come up with exactly the right years because you know kind of senility sets in after a while. So was it, was it BC or AD? B, or? BC means before cameras. That's how right. long it was. It was a long, you know, we we you got you got studio lights here. We had candles. Remember, light the Mirror candles. You know what? Studio? That does bring up an interesting point because I was talking to you just a little bit earlier, Roger, and you were talking about, we were laughing about budget and whatever, and you said we had no budget. You had zero. Well, there was no budget. That's right. There wasn't any. Uh, we had zero. We spent no money on this show. My partner, Roundhouse Rodney, Lynn Dwyer, right. has passed on now, but we did, and we did, I did three one-hour shows a day for a long time, 16 hours, but everything was live, everything was ad lib, but a lot of these guys that are still here, we had a lot of fun. And these were the, the beginning days of television. There were no books. There were no courses on television. And it, it was just a really fun time. It was a, a real team. We spent no money. Everything was live. We were live here at Channel 11 from 6 o'clock in the morning till midnight. Every show, you could strike this set in about 30 seconds, right, Don? <laughs> and we just went bang, bang, bang. Well, you know, you talk about the live <laughs> things happening. I know that, there, that, that you had to kind of ad-lib a lot when things didn't work out well, but I understand that the crew used to pull 
pranks on you all the time. Somebody told me that they had some strippers show up at your door one day. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, no. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm dying. Can, no. yeah, can you elaborate yeah. a little on that? <laughs> well, yes, that's true. There was a hook. Oh, I, she, she told me to say stripper. Right, not Jean? a hook. Not, not hook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, this gal was a stripper, and to get publicity, she went out to the Minnesota Twins and uh, uh, very scantily clad, and she got arrested. Well, the guys played a trick on me. They said the film broke or something, and come on back, and in comes this stripper, uh, and, Ra and Roundhouse, my partner, was very short, and she was quite tall, <laughs> and uh, he was a lot of, he liked to dance with tall girls. <laughs> Hey, wait, wait, they're catching up yeah. with us. Just give them a second yeah. for that to sink else, in. Okay, you couldn't hear the music. Yeah. Yeah. Mind if I change the subject? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to know about. Well, I want to well, know about this. Did they come? Oh, did they well, actually get? Yeah, th th it was not on the air. It was all a farce. They pretended that it was on the air, and I really died, uh, you know, on on camera. Because you've it was got live. these women, these naked women there, and well, you're no, thinking, they what's going to? Well, just how much? How many clothes do they had? Oh, just small. Scantily clad. Small, small clothes. But th this is a tape that's been around all around the country, and I don't even have a copy. If somebody's got a copy, give me a copy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that you was, would. That was uh, Corbin, I wanted to tell you about the personal appearances that we all made, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of appearances at uh, supermarkets, uh, all the McDonald's and Burger Kings and Perkins restaurants. In those days, uh, they thought they could uh, get the best success by appealing to the children on a kid's show, and that would bring in the customers. But Alan and I, as Clancy and Will, we were on the stage at Southdale. I'm going to spring this on you, Al. Oh. And it was a stage about as big as a postage stamp, and yeah. we were in the middle of our shtick there. 500 kids in the audience at Southdale, and I lost my balance and fell <laughs> yes. six feet to a concrete floor. Oh, but to my everlasting uh, virtue, I didn't let go of the mic. <laughs> true, a true broadcaster. Two hours later, yeah. we surgically removed that microphone from his hand. Yeah. With, you know. But then the, the thing that got me was when I finally clambered back on the stage, the kids thought it was part of the show. They said, do it again, Clancy. <laughs> do it again. I said, okay, if you, we, we, we're here to please. And I pushed it. <laughs> again. By the way, speaking of strippers, you have a picture oh, yeah. that was on our show. Yes, yes, our yes. Our show for years was a stripper over here in the person yes. of Auntie Ketchum. Anybody? Auntie Ketchum. Oh, Remember right there. Auntie Ketchum, who come on the show yes, and said, what, well, yes. Clanky? And that's Clancy How's the cop underwear right today? there. <laughs> and this guy here, when he put on that drag <laughs> outfit, just cracked me up. He, he really got into it as Auntie Ketchum. Oh, Did I don't know it. about all this stripping business. <laughs> were you in the wrong, <laughs> the you were the wrong spot? That, 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 Honestly, that, it was kid shows. <laughs> that never happened to me, except that uh, uh, there's another man who used to work here, and I see we're wrapping it up, but let me tell you about a quick change, because we went on camera s switching between Skipper Darrell and the clown. There was only seven minutes. And when I ran in here, there were many times it was a waste-up shot, yeah. because there was nothing there except the jockey shorts. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on that note, yes. uh, uh, we'll find out more about the uh, the jockey shorts and below the weight, and uh, we're going to look at some clips. We'll be back with the uh, the Hall of Fame Kids Show host when we return on Between Friends. Yeah. They're not window glasses, are they? No. Well, all right then, Smarty. What kind of glasses are they? So you give up, huh? Yeah, I give up. Go out, tell me. What kind of glasses? So they're eyeglasses. Eyeglasses? Yeah, they're the real cool kind. Cool like... Yeah. <laughs> it's the fantastic 8th Annual Autumn Festival at Canterbury Downs, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. See what's new for the 90s. Browse your buy as over 500 artists and craftspeople present one of America's biggest and most beautiful arts and craft shows. Be amazed at their special talents and skills. Thrilled by continuous entertainment. Relax and enjoy delicious ethnic foods. Gift certificates every hour. Discount coupons available at area Super Americas. There's no other show like it. Autumn Festival, Canterbury. Downs, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Don't miss it. Bill's Imported Foods has satisfied people from all over the Twin Cities with the best Middle East foods at the best prices. Fresh, domestic, and imported feta cheese, the finest you can buy. You'll find a huge selection of imported olive oils, dozens of kinds of imported olives, along with desserts, pastries, and all brands of Hero's meats. Reach out to enjoy traditional and new taste at Bill's Imported Foods, 721 West Lake at Lindale. Once you shop Bill's Imported Foods, you too will become a frequent shopper. So someone told you you couldn't afford this beautiful living room set or that your credit wasn't good enough to get this gorgeous bedroom set? Wrong. Call Home Furniture Rental. 
because at Home Furniture Rental, you can rent or rent to own. Home Furniture Rental has the Twin Cities' largest selection of rental furniture at the lowest prices. No credit, no problem. Home Furniture Rental. East Lake Street, Minneapolis, University in Lexington, St. Paul. What have you and Auntie Ketchum been up to in the lab? Oh, Clance, we got a big surprise going back there. You right. know, today's a special day. Thank you. Especially like a candle, Auntie. Like on that candle, thank you. Yes. Uh-oh. Look out. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. Say the word. Shows that you may have watched as a kid here in the Twin Cities, and we are talking with several of the performers from those shows. And uh, it's interesting because you were telling me that at one time you had more adults viewing than you did children. True. Well, a lot of things you have to realize. There was a lot of slapstick and a lot of just very simple humor, but th because it was live, things always went wrong. Yeah. And one of the, your voices on Channel 11 right now, Roger Kent. Yes was the was the uh he played he was a, he was a fabulous <laughs> voice i said fabulous roger but he played two live parts but this man roger could pull up more double on tons <laughs> and make the most innocent uh, little skit sound a little bit how shall i say adult and therefore we had a nice adult audience as well until we said okay kids this is for a kid show now we talk Coolest. about we talk about the adult things and we were laughing about this but um I understand that you had a birthday wheel yes. and, and that occasionally that your crew would put kind of naughty names on your birthday wheel. Quite no. often. How did that work? <laughs> I mean, would you, well, did you ever read any of them on the no, air? No, I would read it right off the monitor. And uh, we, we, got a, we used to get a lot of mail and we'd have maybe 30, 40, 100, 200 names on a Friday. And uh, we'd just write, write them off there. And occasionally they would if there were funny names like Eileen Sideways or Ben Dover, <laughs> you know, that's Mr. okay. Bird. <laughs> but, uh, but I do have one picture I'd like yeah. to show okay. you. Uh, maybe some of the folks would uh, remember some of the people also that were right here on Channel 11. That was Sc Sergeant Scotty and uh, Dave Lee and then my partner Roundhouse. And I got another shot of Roundhouse here. It might be a little bit of a glare. And uh, we, we had a lot of fun. And, uh, and a lot of shows that we did together. There's Roundhouse, and yeah, I was young at one time. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, I love uh, yeah, these. Now this is in the, the engine of the train, and, which the kids, uh, which the kids love. Things. You know what? We've got a little clip from the show. Why don't we show that right now? Okay. Because this is uh, lunch with Casey. Sleigh bells ring, and I'm listening, but I'm turning and twisting. But I'm itching up here, and I'm scratching down there, walking in my winter underwear. <laughs> the, the amazing part is he still knows He's all the words. <laughs> Do it again. Oh, that's great. Now, now, Dara, we also have a little clip from, uh, from your show, and I don't know which, you'll have to tell us which one this was from. Uh, this might be Tea and Tatters. Let's I'm see. sure it is, yes. I'll tell you what, for you, uh, I'm going to just take my uh, razor here and sharpen it up a little bit, you see, because I want to yeah. have to sharpen it up because uh, I don't want to uh, nick it. Oh, boy! Just sharpen that baby up right there. Whoop! And it looks like you do well. There you go. Okay, Bertram! Bertram! Oh, no, I hurt my little friend. Bertram, where are you? Did I hurt you, Bertram? Where are you? Bertram, what happened? Did I hurt you? No, you didn't hurt me, but it certainly was a close game. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I understand that one time they, the crew blew your stomach, inflated your stomach, and what oh, happened? That was, a, that was a terrible physical reaction. Uh, <laughs> the idea was to have a stomach ache, and they wore the loose clown pants, yeah. and so we uh, decided that would be show the stomach ache coming up. Well, this balloon started to swell inside my clothes and the pressure was building and I knew when that thing popped, I was going to feel it in some vital spots. <laughs> so I sneaked down a pin and I burst the balloon and, <gasps> oh! <laughs> Thank God it was over. Was it a spot for Brioski or something yes, you exactly, guys were doing? Exactly. But uh, they would frequently pull tricks on you all. The crew would tr do everything to try to break you up. Also, you yeah. were uh, in a terrible snowstorm. Oh. And, and, and it was live, and, and you had yeah. to do some quick uh, thinking on right. the floor. That what did they do? It was a morning show, and uh, I know I wouldn't get there in time because the makeup took uh, about a half an hour, so I called the director, and I, he said, what do we do? For the live stuff, we didn't have enough film to fill with 30 minutes. I said, find the other wig and the hat and my other clothes, put me on a little bed on the set, put me in bed and on the live sets, on the live skits, try to wake me up with explosions, firecrackers, <laughs> sirens, uh, the whole thing. 
And in the meantime, I arrived just in time to jump in the bed before the end of the show. A floorman walked by, dropped a quarter on the floor, and I jumped up and said, who's waking and making all the noise here? <laughs> so that's how they, they killed the time. Knew. You had to be ingenious. Yeah. I know, I, I know, knew. John, you had a lot of celebrities that came by. You were kind of a highbrow. Well, kind of show. Well, uh, remember when the Vice President of the United States, yes. Hubert Humphrey, yes. uh, came to our show? And remember how he took over, Alan? Yes. Uh, he, he was running he asked for, for money, too. I remember. <laughs> yeah. the can. Yes, yes. I remember we were sitting in the studio, and these two fellas came in with their hands like this, you know, and they were walking in, and, and I thought, oh my goodness, we're going to get mugged here. And what it was was the Secret Service people coming in to case the joint, and they looked around, and then they went like this, and in walked Hubert Humphrey, the Vice President of the United States, took yeah. over the show, interviewed us. Yeah. Yeah. And did a nice job, by the way. <laughs> Amazing man. And I'll always remember Hubie. Now I watch his son on television and I say, wow, it's a spitting image. Well, yeah. you know, we had 30 or 40 children in the studio with us every day in the grandstand. And they love to be involved in the commercials. So we try to rehearse the commercial a little bit just to, you know, keep it on the safe side. So I picked this cute little girl, looked like Corbin at the age of eight. Oh, and I said, dear, if Clancy you. asked you if you like Bosco, remember the chocolate yeah. drink? Oh, yes. Yeah, what would you say? She, she said, oh, I love it, Clancy. That was the rehearsal, right? Uh -huh. Now we're on the air and I asked her, how do you like Bosco? And she said, oh, I love it. But my brother hates it! <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it like I, I said, why? 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 And she said, it makes him go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but Johnny. you know, you recover from these Which things. Which is a perfect <laughs> segue to a little story that, that bathroom stories and, and Daryl talking. One time, Harry Jones, our producer, had this wonderful idea that, and it was all live, by the way, this is before tape, and Harry Jones had this wonderful idea of putting a little saucer of water in my seat with some dry ice. There would be a big explosion, I'd fall down, and then they'd zoom in on my seat and show all the smoke coming out of, with the dry ice thing. Well, it so happens the ice spilled out, the water ran down my pants, and I had a big wet spot, and they zoomed in a close-up of my behind with water running down my trousers. And everybody was out there looking at it. My mom never forgave me. Bosco, I had to play that record, Moon Over Miami. Yeah, right. yeah. The Bosco story, uh, we all had Bosco or the Hershey yeah. chocolate syrup, and I don't know how Middlestead or your crew arranged this, but we had a glass that I mixed it in, and I didn't notice as I was mixing it, but as I raised the glass and said, so have a good Bosco every morning, there was a slight <laughs> hole in the bottom of the glass, and it was squirting out in a stream <laughs> from the bottom of the glass, live. It's so nice what they can do to you, isn't it? Yes. We've got a little bit Always. of a clip, I oh. believe, of Clancy the Cop. Oh, great. That, that we might as well go ahead and show, because it's fun stuff right. to look at. Let's look at Clancy. Huh. Somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. And bands are playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Oh, I love it. You said all from memory, too. All well, from you memory. know, we uh, used to have fun with the Minnesota Twins, I know. Casey Jones would be out there for bat day, and you know, what a kick to work in front of 30, 40,000 people. Alan and I were there when the twins played against their children, some of which oh, were yes, all the way yes. from five years old up to 11, and you should have seen Willie Ketchum running after those kids. They'd go to third base instead of first, <laughs> and uh, it, it was really a lot of the fun. The wonderful thing about that, though, that was the first time that I'd ever been in a, in a stadium where when you speak, you get the echo back. Oh, we yeah. say, well, hello, hello, hello. How are you, 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 you? Today, day, 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 day. I remember you said <laughs> Uh, you sounded like Roseanne Barr. Yes, you, uh, to Roseanne yes. Barr. <laughs> did you, all of you uh, guys, did, did you start out your careers like, I'm here in the Twin Cities, it's a, it's a fairly major market, and I think I can support myself and my family as an actor and an on-air personality. I mean, what you did was, was, was monumental. And no, you know what? No, no, we no. couldn't support <laughs> 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 well, yeah, Let's start. Uh, let's start okay. with you at the end. Okay, we'll start. I found out that's what I wanted to do, and I was an actor at the time. I was working at Chan S. and Dinner Theater and various theaters around town, and I came on and I started being with a puppet. Well, I found out by getting onto television, I see you've got a minute left here. Coming on television, you can't make it on a salary that you get in television in those days because it was very low. But we did it for the love of it anyway, and that's yeah. why we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, most of us, I know I started out in radio, John Gallus, I, yeah. Chris Wiedis, and Fritz Mondale. We all went to McAllister together. Uh, we all ended up doing kids shows except for Fritz Mondale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well, similar. Depending on who you well, talk to. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us went from radio into yeah, television. We were radio into television. Yeah. We did a lot of things. We did commercials. We'd sub on the weather. We'd, 
you know, jack of all trades. You just had to do it all. The answer of it really was that uh, you couldn't get, I could, on our station, I couldn't get news, sports, or weather, so I had to find something with a regular daily talent fee. Mm -hmm. And I had the idea of a kid's show, and that's how it came about. Absolutely I wanted to pick amazing. up a talent fee. Then, of course, we had uh, Besides Axel. Besides loving the children. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> We had Clellan Card starring as Axel. How many remember Clellan Card out there? <laughs> and uh, he did uh, the Scandinavian poetry recital, which went like this. Birdie with a yellow bill hopped upon my windowsill, cocked his shining eye and says, How do you like your bath water, Luke? Warm? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I don't know how to possibly top that. We thank all of you gentlemen for coming. Oh, and nice thank you. And what it's a delight. really thank fun you. Thanks to talk with you about this. That. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Shirley MacLaine is going to have uh, some tough shoes to fill after these guys. Uh, we're going to talk about her new movie, Waiting for the Light, and we will have a host of you. It was a little high. Maybe little high. today we can uh, bring it down a little Sing bit. Sing a little lower. Good morning, good morning. It's grand to be on hand. Good morning, good morning to you. When you're done feuding, play the new games in town. The first game show that keeps pace with your world. Play along with Dick Clark and the all-new Challengers. So stop feuding and start playing. The Joker's Wild at 4 and Challengers at 4.30. Weekday afternoons on Carrie Levin. Every day, millions of people are hiding the taste of their hot dogs. There's no question some deserve this fate, but not John Morrell. Our hot dogs are really good, and they've earned the good housekeeping seal. That's because our great taste comes from the unique blend of fresh lean meats and seasonings we put into a hot dog. Not what you put on it. John Morrell, the great taste, stands alone. New John Morrell, bigger than the Bun Franks, available at these fine stores. Join Scott Hamilton, Brian Orser, Kitty and Peter Carruthers, and an all-star cast of world champions for the most dazzling family entertainment event of the year, Discover Card Stars on Ice. It's a festival of thrills and chills you've got to see to believe. Discover Card Stars on Ice coming to Target Center Saturday, November 17th. One performance only. Great seats on sale now at all Ticketmaster outlets or call 612-989-5151 to charge your tickets today. Brought to you by CARE 11 in association with TBD. for you we wanted to give to you right now and it happens to be a great deal on picture framing and if you